everyone, welcome to today's webinar on using formulas and conditions in document using Zoho Writer. I'm Sini and I'll be your host for this session. Joining me is Gautam, a Zoho Writer expert. Over to you, Gautam. So, welcome you all once again to our webinar on harnessing the power of formulas and condition in automation using our advanced tool Zoho Writer. We are going to discuss today about the power of formulas and conditions in Zoho Writer. So manual tasks can be time consuming and tiresome. So which is where automation steps in to rescue us. So in our past webinars, we have explored a range of automation possibilities within Writer. So today we are excited to delve deeper into the realm of formulas and condition. So showcasing how you can leverage them to execute both simple and intricate calculations effortlessly. So we'll uncover the power of formulas for precise calculations and conditions to achieve the desired outcomes. That sounds very interesting, Gautam. I believe this topic will be incredibly beneficial for many of our users. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's discuss the agenda for today. Sure, Sini. Here's today's agenda. So we'll go through the basics of formula followed by the various input methods that is supported in Zoho Writer. And we'll also check how to refer to the formula results in various locations within a document. And we'll also take a look at the new addition in date fields, which will allow you to perform calculations in the date fields. And further, we'll discuss on how to configure conditions in Zoho Writer. And towards the end, we have, we'll discuss about what cooking in Zoho Writer. So we'll talk about the enhancements that we will be releasing soon. That's great. But how can formulas and conditions help me when I perform automation in a word processor like Zoho Writer? That's a good question, Sini. Not to worry. During this webinar, I'll illustrate these features through practical examples. So I'll show you a demo in which I'll guide you through creating a template with conditions and formulas to understand their application in real life scenario. So I'll just quickly show you a glimpse of the template that I've created for today. So here is a glimpse of the template. So this is a mark sheet that a school is going to send to the parents or the guardians based on the students much mark profile in their exams. And furthermore, we also have a payslip that is being completely generated in Zoho Writer from scratch. So we have added so we have added various formulas into the document and you'll be able to use these and generate a payslip and send it out to your employees. So we have this de demo session towards the end of our webinar. So stay tuned for that. Template looks interesting and made me curious to know what's more in it. Let's get going then. Yes. So let's just start with the formula basic. Sure, Gautam. When you talk about basics, I just wanted to know if we have any options to check and choose the functions that are supported in Zoho Writer. Indeed, Sini. So in Writer, when you attempt to insert a formula, you can see a comprehensive list of supported functions. You can simply select the desired function from this list and it will be seamlessly inserted into your formula field for immediate use. That sounds easy. So what if I would like to format the result that I get based on my requirement. Yes, we will talk about formatting. And before that, I'll just show you how this exactly looks like in Zoho Writer. So I have a pretty much blank document. And in here, you can see that I can click on the formula tab, I mean form formula button from the left panel. So all I have to do is that I just have to go to the automate tab and then select formula. So now here, you'll be able to check out the list of functions that is supported in Zoho Writer. And if you require, you can also click on this functions help so that that will take you to the help article and you'll be able to gain more knowledge regarding the formulas in Zoho Writer. So yes, when it comes to, so let's just get back to Sini's question. So how would you format the formulas that, that is being used in Zoho Writer? So yes, Sini, that's possible and it's also easy to so if you wish to format the result according to your specific requirement, Writer provides flexible formatting option. So you can customize the appearance of the result to suit your need effortlessly. So simply choose the required format from the list and apply it. So we also support formats like number to text and number to ordinal, 
not only that, you can also set your format as currency as shown in this screenshot. Okay, that's nice. But I see that the currency format here is in euros. Do I have an option to change that? Absolutely, Sini. Writer offers the flexibility to adjust formatting according to your preference. So the available formats are aligned with the locale of the document. So however, if you desire a different format, you can easily make the switch by adjusting your locale setting. So let me just show you how to change your locale settings so that based on that, you'll be able to format your results in a better manner. So here you can see that every document has its own locale. So you can just click on the bottom left corner, the language and region option and then change the settings of this document so that for example if i would like to have the settings changed to us so i'll just go ahead and click on the united states as my locale and based on that my date format will be changed and also my currency will be changed so you can also view you can also check out the preview that we show for date and time numbers and as well as for currency so if you would like to change it for the entire account then you can go to the account settings by just clicking over here. That's good to know. I'll explore the local settings further to see how I can customize the format to suit my needs better. Could you provide insights into the potential inputs that I can add into a formula? Absolutely, Sini. You have a variety of options for inputs and formula. So you can include numerical values, merge fields, auto fields such as today's date, and even dynamically refer to cell values from tables. So let me just jump over to the document and I'll let you know how to insert these fields into the formula tab. So here you can just click on the formula button and if you just click on this plus icon, you'll be able to check out all the fields that is being available. So you can just simply click on it and insert those fields in the formula tab and you'll be able to perform calculations. So as I mentioned, we have auto fields. So using auto fields, you'll be able to dynamically pick today's date. So whenever you create document or whenever you generate a document, today's date will be dynamically added and you'll be able to perform calculations as well. And yes, you can also select or pick a specific date. And not only that, you can also insert fillable fields into the document and you'll be able to use those fillable fields into the value for calculation and if you have inserted any tables then you'll be able to refer those cell values into your formula tab so these are the various inputs available in in formula okay that sounds fantastic so you spoke about tables and i remember us talking about repeat regions which is mostly used during merge operations is it possible to use formulas there yes it is possible so you, let's just say that you're trying to generate a sales invoice from Zoho CRM and you have to calculate the total price based on the products that the customer has purchased. So you can simply insert a subform in the repeat table. When you insert a subform in the repeat table, which will pull up the data from Zoho CRM. And what you can do is that you can insert a formula inside the table cell. The beauty here is that the formula will be dynamically added based on the number of table rows that is getting generated and the number of table rows are also based on the data source that you have chosen. So let me just quickly jump over to the document and show you how you can insert a formula into a repeat table. I do have a repeat table so I have chosen purchase orders as a data source in my from my Zoho CRM. Now, Let's just say that I need an additional column that contains the total of this document. I'm sorry, the total of this uh, table. So now once I select, once I enter the values over here, I can just go to the formula field. And let's just say I just want to calculate or get the sum of all the values available in the left panels. So I'll just go ahead and enter left. It's required. I can also format the results when I get. So if, if there are any decimal values, then I can limit that to just two decimal values. Or if I do not want any decimal values, then I can simply select zero as the format number. And not only these, we also have various formats available. 
So once you click on this, once you click on that, uh, the formula will be inserted into the table. So now let me just go ahead and show you a preview. So as you can see in this preview, the amount and the quantity is being added based on my requirement. So you can check out here that the sum of the left values available is being taken into, uh, into account and the total is being displayed. And not only that, I just added it for a single row. And since it's repeatable, the formula is also dynamically generated based on my, based on the number of rows that is being created. So this is how you can insert formula into repeat read. Okay, that's great. Now, this saves me a lot of time as I don't have to manually input the formula into each row. Well, it's good to know that the formulas can be added in tables, but what if I want to utilize a cell's value within the table to create a formula? Well, you can do so by just mentioning the cell's row and column, like a P2 or C2, and then use it in your formula. So currently, we generate the values from top to bottom, so you can make use of the cell values accordingly. Hey, that's cool. So consider the sales invoice scenario we have discussed. If I have calculated the total pricing using a formula, can I display this total elsewhere within the document, not just within the table? You can. All you have to do is that just insert a formula into your document and use table cell reference in your, into your formula tab. So let's say if you have uh, multiple tables, then you can also name them for your personal identification and just simply refer it refer to the cell and then insert the formula so now the inserted formula will display the referred cells value and not only that right also allows you to format it based on your preference so let me just quickly jump over to the document and show you a demo so let's just take this document as a sample document and i have a total available in this particular column so now I just want this total to be displayed elsewhere, not within the table, but within the document. So what I can do is that I can just go to the formula tab on the formula button over here and click on it. So now I'll have an option to refer the tables cell value. So if there are multiple tables, what I can do is that I can just simply name the table according to my preference and use that in my formula field. So now I'll just go ahead and Now I'll just go ahead and insert a formula with the table cells value. So in here, I just want the three cells value to be displayed elsewhere. So I'm just going to type E3 and let's just say I just want this to be converted to text. So for example, if there is any pay slip or if there are any invoices that is being generated and if you'd like to convert those total value into text, then you can make use of this format. An auditory text, if you are using a currency, then you can select this format and various others as well. So now I have selected number to text and then I'm clicking on insert. So now you can see that the, the value that I've got from a table cell is being referred outside the document, not just within the table as per your requirement. Right. That sounds interesting. You were telling me that I can perform calculations using date. That is correct. So you can find differences between two date fields. For example, let's consider a real life example where a resort that needs to calculate the duration of a guest stay. So once they, they, they were able to calculate this, they'll be able to generate bill accordingly. So by retrieving the guest checking date from the data source and calculating the number of days spent in the resort, they'll be able to easily generate the bill with precision. Can you show a quick demo of this? Definitely. So before we proceed to the demo, I'll just quickly let you know how you can calculate in using date fields. So here is a screenshot of how I have added data def function in formula and I have, I have, I'm performing a calculation. So when, when I quickly jump over to the demo here, I do have in this document, I have a date field called due date. So before I perform or before I start to perform any calculations using date, I just have to make sure that the field value or the field type is set to date. So here I'm just going to use due date. So I just have to make sure that the type is set and it is being configured as date. 
So once it is done, I can go ahead for configuration. So I just have to make sure that the input that I'm giving in the data source has to be the locale and the format has to be selected in here. And based on my preference, I can choose any different output into the writer document. So in here, I'm just going to make the output date format same as the data sources format. So now, once I am done with this patient, I can go ahead and click on save. So once this is done, I'll just go ahead and insert this date field into the doc. So now what I'll do is that I need the difference between today's date and the due date. So in this case, what I can do is that I'll just go ahead and click on formula and select order fields. So before I select auto fields, I can choose the function data diff and inside it, I'll just go ahead and add the auto field. So let me just go ahead and pick the date. Yes. So now I have selected a specific date and I just want the difference between this date and the due date that is being in the data source. So for this, I'll just click on this plus icon, go to the merge fields and then go to purchase order and insert due date. Once this is done, if I want this result to be in days, then I can use the operator or else I can use the month operator. So for that, I just have to insert a comma and within inverted commas, I can choose months or date based on my preference. And we also support year as well. So here I'm just going to use months so that I can know the difference between the, the uh, difference between these two dates and the result will be in month. So now I've inserted the formula and I'm just going to go like, I'm just going to quickly check the preview. So here you can see that the date available in the data source is March 5, 2025. And the um, difference between this date and the specified date is 27 month. So if required, I can also change that to days. So let me just go ahead and change this to E. So once it is updated, I'll be able to record the preview and I can find the difference between the is in the date field. Okay, thank you so much for the demo. That really helped me understanding the functionality of data dev. So Gautam, since the beginning, I've been curious about the usage and implementation of conditions and write-up. Could you shed some light on this topic? Absolutely. So using conditions in writer you'll be able to hide or show content dynamically. To explain it with, with an example, let us say that there is an insurance company sending out policy renewal invoices to their policy holders. So for customers with a history of timely payment, the notice may include loyalty discounts or bonus coverage option. While for those with lap payments, it may emphasize the importance of renewal and outline consequences of non-payment. So in general, this feature allows you to create personalized content during bulk document generation, ensuring that each document is tailored to the specific criteria or characteristics of the recipient. Hey, that's nice to know, Gautam. I can now see how conditions can be used and this will help me out a lot. Yes, definitely, Sini. So in Writer, when inserting a condition, you also have range of operators at your disposal. So feel free to select the one that best suits your requirement. So we have a contains, begins with, ends with, etc. Not only that, you can also further add and or or conditions to further filter your results. So you'll be able to insert these into your document and you'll be able to use that conditions easily. So let me just quickly jump over to the demo and I'll show you this works. So let's just say if I would like to insert a condition, so I can just go ahead and insert condition. So here, let's just take this due date as an example. So for example, if I would like to display certain contents, if the due date is greater than a specific date, so I can choose this operator and I can specify this date value. So let's just say I'll use today's date and then insert the condition into the document. So now uh, let me just show that click only. Yeah. Now I'll just go ahead and click on preview. So you can uh, count the result. So yes. So here you can see that the due date is greater than the specific date. So if it is less, then you can see that the due date is not greater. 
so based on the conditions i can display various text in my document and hey that's great is there anything else that i would like that i would need to know about conditions gautam yes you can also make use of conditions in table in order to hide or show a row why would hiding or showing a row in a table be beneficial so let's just say that a bank wants to send out personalized loan approval letters based on the credit score of the applicant they will now be able to show or hide the row indicating benefits like less or no processing fee so in the output document only the applicants with high score credit i'm sorry high credit scores will be able to view this whereas in the document generated for applicants with lower credit scores the row will be hidden that actually opens up a more streamlined and personalized yeah as you mentioned you can also control text using conditions as well so you can add in the if else condition and using that you will be able to control the text that is being added into the document okay that's great can you add more on that sure not only that you can also use conditional sign off field to use conditions you can also send a document for signature well i see that conditions can be used in text and rows of a table Sending a document for signature needs a configuration, right? How can we configure the signers in this scenario? You can add a condition where if the condition is met, you can send the document for signing to a specific person. And if the condition is not met, then you can send it to a different person. Can you provide me any real-world examples to illustrate this process? Yes, there are many examples and I'll explain one def for sure. Do you remember the demo session that we talked about earlier? So yes, yeah, so let's just go ahead and start. So yeah, as we talked about earlier, these are the templates that we have to plan for today. So this is a mark sheet. In here I have got the student's profile, fee payment information and the student's academic information. So in order to generate this, I have created a custom module in Zoho CRM students called students. So here I have various information of the particular student. So let's say the name, the details and the subjects that are three term exams and for which the the marks obtained by the student is added as a sub form and furthermore i have checkbox fields where if the user i'm sorry if the student has got a parent and if parents the one who's going to sign the document then i will have have a check if the parents is not checked then i will check the guardian and i'll add the guardian information into the user's record so now I have another section where uh, there are fee payment which is being pending. So if there are any pending information, I have added those over here. And if the student is eligible for scholarship, I have used the checkbox in order to indicate that. And furthermore, I also also added a generic payment link in the CRM record. This is how I have created a custom module in Zoho CRM. Now using this. I'll be able to merge and send documents and not only that I'll also be using various formulas and conditions in my template. So now here you can see that I have inserted pretty much all the fields, all the basic fields, all the merge fields into the document. So now once this is done, I have added a if else condition in order to display the student's parent's name or guardian name based on the data available in CRM. So now you can see that I added if else condition to display the name of the parent and guardian so furthermore i have added a formula where i am calculating the number of days left for payment so in crm i have a payment due date which is a date field and using that i am calculating the difference in the number of days so if i click on edit option i'll be able to show you that this is the current date so this will be the date in which the document is injected and this is the payment due date so this date is being pulled from the from the crm and the current date will be dynamically generated so once it is done i'll be able to generate or uh, provide you with the uh, provide you with the number of days that is left for payment so further i have students payment link so in order to get this link i have made a configuration where i can personalize links that is getting generated in writer So here you can see that I have inserted a field called students payment link which is uh, which is the field that I have in Zoho CRM and furthermore I have added students name into the link so that 
based on the student's name i'll be able to create personalized link for that particular student in pulp generation of document so once these operations are done let's just quickly jump over to the next section of the document which is the academic performance so here all these fields are pulled from the subform data available in zoho crm and in order to get this total sub total of these subjects i have added a field and i have configured the value so here i have added all the subject fields and i have used the addition addition operator in order to add these data and get a total the total of the subject so now once this is done i have also added a sum above formula into this particular cell so that once all the three um, um, information is being gathered i'll be able to provide a sum of total of all these three so further using the total that i get in this particular cell i'll be able to create a percentage or i'll be able to generate the percentage obtained by this students so for this i have used the table cell reference over here so you can see that i have used mark sheet which is the table name and g3 g3 is the cell value of the total in which i have i'm getting the total of so further i have divided that in by 1500 because i've got uh, uh, three terms and the total would be 1500 further i am multiplying it by 100 in order to get the percentage and not only that i have also formatted the person formatted the result based on my requirement which is percentage value so now once i update this you can see here that if the student has scholarship i'll be able to display these contents and furthermore i have also customized the scholarship link by adding additional data into the link so yes so now all these informations are done so let's just talk about the conditions in signer fields so here you can see that i have the signer signature field inserted so if the student's parent is going to sign the document then i'll be i have to insert the parent's email address the guardian is going to sign the document then i'll have to insert the guardian's email address how will i manage this so in order to overcome this cumbersome issue what i can do is that i can just go to the automate tab and then click on merge and send for sign collect so in here i'll be able to add in a condition so i am just saying that if the student's parent the box that i have in crm is checked then you need to send the document to the parent's email address so if it is unchecked then you can send to the guardian seal letter so this is the condition that i'm using so it based on this when it comes to bulk document generation the document will be automatically sent to the respective parent or guardian based on the data source value so isn't it that amazing that i can generate bulk documents by using this option so now i'll just go ahead and give you a preview of this and let you know how this exactly looks like once the results are obtained so here you can see that the name and the information is being generated and you can see the number of days left for payment which is the date of death calculation so further I've also added the payment link and then when it comes to this form you can see all the three term mark results over here and there is a total that is being generated and using this total i am generating a percentage value as well and since this student is eligible for scholarship i am displaying this content and i'm just going to send this document for your parents signature so this is the first example that we have for today and let's just quickly jump over to the next set of example which is payslip so similarly similarly you all also added a payslip so we find that users or users using our application are pay way more expensive products in order to make use of to generate payslips so in writer you can just easily generate that and you can all add in various formulas and you can also format your formulas in a different method as well so here uh, you can see that i have used a merge merge field into the formula tab over here so the monthly cdc is merge field that i am getting from the spreadsheet so here i have used a spreadsheet as my data source and i'll just quickly show you the data that i have so here you can see that the name date of joining monthly cdc work mode etc so these are the informations that i have 
So using this, I can generate various other informations as well. So here, I'll also be able to generate the YTD for four months. So in this case, I'm just creating a field called month diff. So here you can see that I'll just go to the manage fields from the left panel and I have created a name field called month diff and I have selected the type as number and in here I have added a specific date which is January 1, 2024 and the current date. So I'll be able to calculate the YTD for the n number of months that I have that I've paid this employee. So now once this is done, I have inserted this into the into the table and I have added B3, which is the cell value, the basic of the employee. So using this, I'll be able to generate or produce results using formulas. So not only that, I have also added a row condition. So you can see that if the date difference is greater than one, I need to display specific row or else I would like to hide this row completely. So once this, so here you can also see that I've added a row condition and within that I've added a text condition. So if the users work from the work mode is work from home, then I'm going to provide them 2000 as other allowances. If it is work from office, then I'm going to use 1000 as the other allowances. And not only that, you can also insert conditions within formula as well. So as you can see here, if B3 is greater than 15,000, I'm sorry, 50,000, then it is 1,000. If it is lesser than 50,000, then 2,000. And I've also configured currency as the format option. So not only that, you can also make you, you can also save these formulas that you insert into the document and you'll be able to reuse them. So you can check out this formula list over here and you can reuse it anywhere within the document. Further, you can see that there are two different tables in this document. So first is the table one and uh, second one is the table four. So let's just say I just want to hide this table completely. So what I have done is that I have inserted a if else condition. I have and and then I have added the table within my if else condition. So only if the condition is met, I'll be able to generate a table. So if it is not met, then I'll not be showing this table in the final result. So let me just quickly show you a preview on how this exactly works. Here you can see that Gautam is one of the rec and this user has enabled reimbursement. So I'm just displaying this table. So when I go to the next record, you can see that the table is hidden. So not only hiding, it will also be removed from the calculations as well. So I have added calculations in the total output. So I have referred various cell values from different tables. So here you can see that I have added, I have, I've got results from table one as well as from table four. So in the second record, if the table four is not available, then a writer will automatically omit it and provide you the appropriate results. And further moving on to the final one, I have also formatted, formatted it into number to text. So based on that, the text, the number is being converted to text format. So this is how easy it is for you to generate a page slip using various formulas in Zoho Writer and you can easily send it out for employees. So yes, these are the examples that we have planned today. And let's just move on to the final section, what's cooking. Right, thank you so much for that detailed demo Gautam and showcasing how a page slip or a report card can be created using Zoho Writer. We have planned certain enhancements in formula and we have also supported some more fields in formulas that will be really exciting. So here's aggregate field. So many users might be aware of aggregate fields in Zoho Writer. So if you're not aware of it, then please do check out our previous webinars where we have entirely discussed on how aggregate fields and transform data work. So please do have a check at it. It is available in our completed webinars in the website. So you can make use of, you can create aggregate fields and you can use that in conditions as well. So when you insert that in conditions, you'll be able to provide or get various outputs based on requirement. So for example, let me just, so here is a local setup. So this is a local setup that I have. So you'll not find these options when you try these. So for now, we'll be releasing these features soon. So let's just say I would like to insert a condition. 
for that i'll i'll just want the total of english the subject english that i have added so what i can do is that i can just click on aggregate and then select sum and select whole data source and add in as total english so i just want to get the total of the subject english so the mark obtained in english needs to be pulled for me so once this is done i can go to the subform field and i'll just insert the get field into the document now if i would like using this so for example if i would like to provide a scholarship for a student who's getting a good marks in english or mathematics then i'll be able to use this aggregate field in my condition so i can just simply go to tab and click on conditions and insert text condition so here you can see that the aggregate field is listed so as of now we do not support it so we have we are still it's a work in progress so you'll be able to use this feature soon so please stay tuned to writers for the recent update that we are going to make so yeah that's about aggregate fields in conditions and further we are also planned to provide some enhancements in formula which are net present value where it actually returns the net present value of an investment with a series of varying periodic cash payment and a discount rate so when it comes to present value it returns the present value of an annuity investment with constant periodic payments and constant interest rate so i hope you people might be aware of these functions so let me just quickly show you a quick demo or how we have obtained this in right up so yes you can see that we have used mpv formula and the pv formula and sv formula in these tables in order to get these results so this is also this will also be supported in the upcoming update so you can use these formulas and uh, get appropriate results so yeah that's pretty much for today's webinar and i really thank you all for joining this webinar